I'm excited. Are you are you excited? Are you ready? <laughs> awesome. Good. Good. I bet the weather there is nice. Yeah, it's a little bit cold, but it's better today. <laughs> oh, is it? That's good. <laughs> we're we're a little bit chilly here, but I mean it's yeah. Vegas. <laughs> so Yeah. Much better than the negative forty degrees you've been hearing about everywhere. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. <laughs> all right, we should be live, and uh, we should be able to, or hopefully you guys can all see us. Uh, for those of you that are new, welcome. We're excited to have you with us. Uh, we are going to be starting in just a couple of minutes here, but I wanted to let you guys know first how everything works so that uh, you can uh, be familiar with uh, everything that goes on here at Kate Co. Uh, we have on the... On the right-hand side of your screen, you should be able to see uh, a chat box. Uh, and you can chat with everybody that's here. And if you have any questions for Sydney throughout the training, you can ask them there. You can type them into that chat box. And we will keep, uh, keep track of all of those. And hopefully, we will get all of your questions asked and answered. So uh, make sure that that's there. If, if for some reason the chat box isn't working for you, it happens sometimes. If it's not working for you, you can actually submit your questions down below. There's a place to uh, comment. So you can add your questions or, or whatever down there in the comment section. And we will look for that, look for questions down there also. Uh, let's see. We have... Um, uh, let's see, Sydney's here, if you can say hi, Sydney. Hi! <laughs> there we go. All right, and I hope you guys enjoy the training. It's uh, it's live, so anything could happen. <laughs> and sometimes we get some weird things going on, so hopefully hopefully we don't have any hiccups today and, and everything will be fine. Um, so, yeah, I guess we will go ahead and get started. We'll pause for just a few seconds so that uh, we can uh, edit the, the, this part out <laughs> for, for uh, the replay. So, anyway, um, yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Cake Food Master Series. I'm Amelia Carbine, your host. And uh, I'm very glad that you guys are all here. And thank you for uh, co constantly coming and constantly being a part of Cake Fu. We really, really love our listeners, and we really love what we do. So thank you for, for coming, and, and uh, hope that uh, this new year brings just as much excitement and fun and, and good trainings as, as we had last year and uh, hopefully even better. So <laughs> uh, today we have a really great guest with us. Uh, she is super talented and super cute and young. And <laughs> Sydney Galpern is our sugar expert here for today. And she has some really cool things to show us. And so we want to welcome Sydney. Hi, thanks for having me. Hey, so uh, we're going to talk about um, a, a fun topic that, or I guess a technique that you uh, have done. You recently posted a cake, it's the Rockabilly cake. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can pull that up here and show you guys all this cake because it is super, super cute. Okay. You. Oh, you are welcome. <laughs> Thank you for making such a cute cake. Oh, okay. Here it is. Here it is. This is her rockabilly cake. Isn't that adorable? I just love it. Oh. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so uh, we're going to be uh, talking about this rockabilly cake uh, and how and how you did this. Uh, some of the techniques that are on this cake. So it's going to be really cool, really fun stuff. And with ice malt, of course, because with Sydney it has to be ice malt, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And also, you guys, we are going to be doing a giveaway at the end. So I want you guys all to know that uh, we have a, a, we actually have four giveaways today. Four. It's awesome. So first one is a, a package from Sydney. It is going to be um, a combination of uh, three major things. You've got a, um, a rose slash uh, carnation mold, 
And oh, let me let me pull these up for you so you can see them too. Uh, and then also there is a whoops, went past it. Okay. There we go. So there's the rose carnation. And is this something that you use in, in the Rockabilly cake? Um, the rose carnation mold is something that I don't particularly use on the cake itself, but it can be used. It matches um, pretty much exactly. And I'm going to show how you could incorporate it um, onto the cake. If you didn't want to do like the pulled flowers or something like that, you can do this um, in casting. And it would be a little cool. bit easier. So. Perfect. OK, and then there's also the rope mold and then a package of isomalt, so just the clear isomalt. Um, and, and you can color that, right, mm -hmm. with, yeah. with whatever colors you want. Mm -hmm. So it's a really good package. It's going to be 25% off. And you can actually find that over at, let's see. Do I have, I, I didn't put a link for that one. Bob, you'll put up a link. <laughs> I think it's actually down below our screen. I just was going to have a, a lower third for it. But um, yeah, you can actually go to uh, our, we actually have, this is really exciting, guys. It's something we've just started. It's pretty new. We have a cake food marketplace now. So it's still new in the works. We've had it going for a few weeks now. Um, and it's been really exciting to, to have. And hopefully we'll keep, you know, continue to add things to that. But. Uh, we actually have this kit available in our marketplace. So if you go to um, the tabs at the top of the screen, you can click on Marketplace, and you can go and find find it there, along with some other cool things. So, um, so yeah, that's one thing we're going to be giving away. Another thing we're going to be giving away is icing images. Uh, is really uh, they've got amazing products. They have just really awesome products. <laughs> and they are going to be giving away a $50 gift certificate. Uh, Sydney actually uses the, the icing images in this training and, um, and on that Rockabilly cake. All those images that you saw, they are actually from icing images. So um, icing images is going to give a $50 gift certificate, which is so cool. And then um, they are actually offering a discount also. Let me tell you guys the, the discount really fast. It is, hang on, <laughs> let me find it. Okay. So it is going to be a 10% discount, I believe. Okay, there we go. It is a 10% off a minimum order of $120. Um, you can go onto their website, and I do have a link for that that I will show you guys. Boy, all these links, <laughs> all, these, all these giveaways, I have to do a lot of work. <laughs> OK, so you can go to their website, uh, www.icingimages.com, and uh, you know pick, pick some awesome uh, icing images or or products that are on their website, you will get 10% off of a $120 order. And then also, um, let's see, there is also uh, $100 off of a lifetime subscription to iDesigns. iDesigns is super cool, and I think we, uh, we need to have a training on that. <laughs> I think that would be yeah. awesome to have a training on that. Okay. So, but um, a lifetime subscription to uh, iDesigns, $100 off of that. And uh, the coupon code for, for the iDesign would be Sid Cake Foo, um, S I D K or C A K E F U, and then the the coupon code for the ten percent off would be just Sydney S I D N E Y. So we will have all of that <laughs> entered in for you better towards the end. But I just wanted to let you guys all know that these are all great uh, things that are that are coming up. And then also we have. Um, uh, Edible, uh, what? Edible artists. <laughs> I had to think about it for a minute. Edible artists network. Mm -hmm. They um, they are going to be giving away a year subscription to their digital magazine, which is really awesome. And then also they are going to be giving away one.
physical magazine to somebody. So, and Sydney actually is one of the Ask the Experts in the mm -hmm. magazine, so that's really cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Okay. So, yeah, be, uh, be here at the end for all those giveaways. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, so Sydney, let's talk about you a little bit and about, um, uh, for anybody that doesn't know very much about you, I, I'm sure that most of these people do, but just to, just to cover things, um, let's, let's start off with, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 18. That is so awesome. And you started really young into yeah, sugar work. Um, I started when I was 12, and I've been doing it ever since, so about six years. Awesome. That is just amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I have a I have a little girl that she's eight and mm -hmm. we're thinking, hmm, we're getting close. <laughs> <laughs> and she loves she loves anything sugar work too, so oh, good. that'll be fun. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, she thinks you're pretty cool. <laughs> All right. So um also let's talk about um you went to school, uh you took some was it an online school that you did? Mm -hmm. Um, I did for uh, my chocolatier, because I'm a certified professional chocolatier, um, that formal schooling I did was called Equal Chocolat, and that certified me. It was an uh, online program based out of Vancouver. And so I did that uh, to become a certified professional chocolatier. But then I also uh, interned in New York City and West Palm and uh, Orlando for more of like the sugar, the bloom sugar and um, cakes and things like that. Very cool. That's really awesome. So um, I know that we talked about um, uh, in in pretty good detail in your first training that you ever did with us. We talked about that schooling that you went to. Lots of questions on that, yeah. and so you know I, I think people were very interested in that. Yeah. But um, but yeah, but now Sydney, you teach classes and and you you know teach all over the country, and and so. And and cake foo, you know, and yeah. Edible Artist Network, and yeah. you're just all over the place. It's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, okay. So we are going to just jump right into the the training part and and let you show everyone how how you did what you did on that amazing cake. Yes. Okay. So I'll just l let you go. <laughs> okay. Um, so first, I'm just going to kind of explain what ice melt is. If anybody out there doesn't know what it is or isn't exactly sure if you've seen it before, I'm just going to kind of do an overview of what it is. Uh, ice melt is a sugar substitute, so it is not actually sugar. It is completely sugar-free, and it is made from beets, so it's kind of a byproduct of beet sugar. And it is safe for anyone who can't have sugar because it is 100% completely sugar-free. Um, the reason that it's used instead of sugar is because in high humidity places, and even in places that aren't in high humidity, um, ice melt just works better. Uh, being in Florida, it's very, very humid here. Even in the winter now, it's still um, fairly humid. So I have to use ice melt because ice melt stands up just so much better. It stays a lot clearer. It stays um, shinier, and it doesn't get sticky as fast. And if I were to use um, sugar instead of ice melt, it would melt into a puddle within about an hour here. My entire piece that I had made, it would melt. So ice melt stands up really well to that. It starts out kind of like a white powder or a crystal, and you have to cook it down according to a recipe once. It's kind of like tempering chocolate, except you only have to do it once. And once it's cooked down according to that recipe, then it's finished. So basically, all you have to do is remelt it. So I have some here um, that's in tile forms, if you guys can see that. And so this is already cooked. Uh, and I don't have to go according to a recipe. The recipe is on my website if anyone wants to see it. But um, this has already cooked everything that I'm using. Um, it's my recipe and my brands that I'm working with. That's what I like the best, obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, your pre-cooked are, are really nice because, oh, you. Like, like you said, you don't have to do it over again. It's already done for you. And you right. just throw it in the microwave. So yeah, that's, exactly. that's awesome. Yeah, all I'll have to do for um, any of the pieces that I'm making out of Ice Mod on here is just melt it in the microwave and then do whatever I'm going to do with it, which I'll explain in more detail um, as I do it. You do have to be careful with these because um, you may or may not know it gets very, very hot. Uh, when it's liquid, it can reach upwards of 300 degrees, uh, so you have to definitely be careful. I would recommend highly wearing gloves, usually uh, a cotton glove first with like a plastic or latex glove over top of that, and that will buffer the heat but keep it from sticking. You notice that I don't wear gloves, but that's 
only because I've been doing it for so many years. My hands aren't heat sensitive anymore, um, so I don't wear gloves. But definitely, especially if you've never worked with it before, definitely wear gloves. Um, I would highly, highly recommend that. <laughs> okay, so um, the first thing that I'm going to show you is I'm going to do the rows first. Now on this cake, I don't know if you can see it, I have it over here, but I did some pulled roses uh, on the cake. Uh oh, so it looks like we, um, we froze a little bit. Sometimes things like this happen. I know that uh, she was... Any pulling? Oh, sorry. You're back. We lost oh, you for a minute. <laughs> for just oh, a minute. Oh, it's probably the microwave, sorry. <laughs> yep, yep. There is an oh, issue okay. with the microwave today. <laughs> is it melting? Okay. Am I on now or can you see me? Yes, I can see you now. We're good. Okay. Um, so this is the finished piece. If you, I don't know if you saw that before. But that is what it will come out looking like. So I'm just going to show you how to do this. It looks very, very similar to the pulled ones. Uh, so if you are intimidated by pulling or if you haven't done it before, uh, this is definitely an alternative that you can do that's a lot simpler. So that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do. All right. So I have my mold here, and I'm using um, the rose carnation mold that you had talked about earlier. And so you can see one side has the carnation and one side has the rose. And this is from my line of mold, so I make these. And so I'm just going to bring it down here and angle this. Make sure you guys, can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. All right. So now I have some ice malt here that I heated up in the microwave, and it's very, very hot. I did tint it red um, using the Sugar Art Rose uh, Red Rose Elite Powder. So it's a matte color. It's not a shimmery color. And so I heated it up in the microwave for about 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals until it's a nice liquid. You can see nice and liquid here. All right, so I'm just going to let all of the bubbles disperse. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's really, really bubbling. And so I want to let all of the bubbles disperse first. I don't want to let it cool too much, but I do want to just make sure that any when I pour, no bubbles are going to get into my finished piece. All right. So I just give that a minute. I don't really want to stir it too much because that can turn the bubbles in. So I just want to let them kind of sit and do their own thing. And I just want to get it till they stop popping. If there's a couple that are just sitting on the top, that's okay. But I want to make sure that none of them are continuously boiling. All right, that should be good. Okay, so I'll get this. You can see it. So I'm just going to fill up the rows here, and I'm going to do it away from myself so you guys can see. And so this is made out of silicone, so um, I don't have to grease it, and I don't have to powder it at all, because ice malt releases from silicone. You also notice I'm using a silicone bowl for easier cleanup. So I'm just going to take and pour this directly into the mold. Again, being very, very, very careful, because it is th about 300 degrees. Okay, I'm going to fill it almost all the way up. And then I'm going to just tilt it into any of the little details that it didn't get in initially because I don't want it to be too thick. I don't want to risk overflowing it, so sometimes it's easier to very carefully tilt it or you can use the spatula to kind of push it in or a toothpick or something like that. Now, I do have a couple bubbles here on the surface, so what I'm going to do to get rid of those is just use my little chef's torch and just very lightly go over the top. And that should remove any bubbles. Um, and I'm doing that right when it's liquid, too. So you want to make sure. Um, because that will basically heat up the surface and just thin, up, thin it out and bring all the bubbles to the top so they um, can pop. All right. So now I'll let that cool. That'll probably take 10 minutes about because it's fairly thick. And I will put that off to the side. And now I'm going to use some clear. OK. So I'll have to use the microwave again. Hopefully it won't cut out too much. Okay, Sydney, she had a, um, someone had a question. They said, when you color isomalt, do you use powdered coloring, or mm -hmm. can you use another type, such as gel colors? Um, you can't use gel colors. Gel colors will not mix in. So they'll stay kind of chunky, and they just won't disperse. You can, usually I'll just use, um, like this is the red rose that I used, um, this nice powder, and I just mixed it in. 
You can use a liquid airbrush color as well. You just have to be careful because it can thin the ice melt down if you add too much. What I like about the powder is it can't really thin it down, so you can add as much as you need to. But um, if you do more than a few drops of the liquid color, it can thin it down and the ice melt won't uh, harden properly. All right, great. Okay. So let's see. For the next pieces that I'm going to show you, um, I actually have a piece here on the cake. Uh, you'll see that I did some pieces. Here, I'll kind of turn it so I can show you. Um, I did some flatter pieces, like I have an anchor here. Uh, I have the roses that are at the bottom. You guys can see that, and I have some that all mm -hmm. um, I took these pieces off, and I can hold them up, and you can see it better. And I have... Um, my sparrow. Oh, it looks like we've uh, and frozen your picture again. Sorry. The microwave, yeah. Maybe not. Yep, the microwave froze it again. But um, it just went in the meantime, I can show you guys a picture of something super cool that she did. Oh, you're back. Am Next back? time I'll show you guys. <laughs> yep, you're back. Okay, I think it just went off, so that's probably why. <laughs> yep. Okay, um, so I have the pieces. I did the uh, roses on the bottom tier, the anchor. Uh, the pinup girl and the sparrows and the banner that's on the top tier. I did those all the same way. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that. I'm just going to do one because that would get kind of boring. I did all the pieces. But um, initially on the cake, I first covered all of the tiers in just white fondant because I wanted a nice clean background. Uh, I was going for kind of um, a rockabilly, like we had said before, uh, just kind of a classic style. So I wanted a nice clean background of the cake. And then on the bottom and on the um, middle tiers, I used this. Um, this is the uh, quilted uh, lattice. And this is the dye from Icing Images and Spellbinders. And I cut this mm. with um, the Sweet Accents uh, cutter. And I cut it out of the black Icing Images paper. So um, I covered two of the tiers in that. So Real fast, can I insert a little bit of something here? Yeah. <laughs> um, for those of you that uh, um, are are wondering about that uh, spellbinder thing, we actually did a training with Peggy Tucker. Um, it was a while ago, um, but yeah, if you look back through our um, trainings, you can actually find them on it, it'll say Master Series, the tabs at the top of the website. If you click on Master Trainings, it'll bring up a whole list of the trainings, and you can go through, and you can find uh, Peggy's training on the Icing Images, um, the Spellbinders by Icing Images. So um, that that's a really that's a really cool um, tool. So yeah, it's to... really neat, and it makes it really easy. I wouldn't. I mean, it would be hard to kind of paint on a, a design like that, or um, try and punch it out or anything. So I just took. I have the die, and then I put my paper on it. And then I have two of the boards that come with the spell binder, and I just sandwich it in between. And then you just run that through the machine. Mm -hmm. See that? So I um, cut all of those out of black paper, and then I covered the tiers. And then on the um, second to the bottom tier, I use this uh, die, which is from, I believe, the designer borders. And this is kind of a scalloped edge. So I just use that with some blue paper to give it kind of a nautical wave look for the anchor to go on. And the top tier I left uh, plain white because the banner would be covering most of it. Um, unfortunately, the banner isn't on here anymore, but I'm going to make another one so that you guys can see um, how to do that. Okay. So I have um, the banner that I did. I cut out again with one of the, uh, this is from the uh, spell binders as well. So this is kind of a nice border decorative banner. And I believe this is, there's a set of them, and this is the largest one in the set. And I cut it out, and I have my piece here. Now this one I had um, already painted. It did, I just did it in white paper because I'm going to paint it to kind of a parchment looking um, design. I already painted it with love, I wrote on it, um, in kind of like a tattoo style um, font. And then I traced the edges with some black and added the ruffles in the fabric, just because that would take a long time and it would get boring just watching me sit here and paint. But um, obviously you can customize that. You can print uh, out, if you're not confident in your painting skills, you can print out a word and then just position the die on top of it when you go to put out the paper. You don't have to paint it on. 
I just did because I wanted something more um, custom. So I have this here already, and I just, to paint it, I used um, the Sugar Art powders. I used Turkish black and, again, that red rose, and I mixed it with a little bit of alcohol. And that's how I just painted it, on, painted it onto the banner. And so now I'm going to paint this. You could leave it white, but I wanted it to stand out. Since I had a white cake, I wanted it to stand out a little bit more. So I'll just angle this down. You guys can see that. And let's see. I'm going to start off. With this is wedding gold. You can see that it's wedding gold sterling pearl from the sugar art. And I'm going to paint that all over the banner. Now, normally I would do this before I paint it on the black and the red, just to make sure that it's a little bit crisper, um, the colors, instead of putting the pearl over it. But for this, it will still look good. So I'm just going to paint it over. And I'm going to do the whole thing. Just kind of a rough, it doesn't have to be perfect because it can look a little bit aged. Um, if you'd like to, I'm going to be adding some more details with color in a second. So it doesn't have to be exactly. So do you find that even with the, the powder on top of the, the paper that you can actually paint with the, the powder on too and it doesn't mm -hmm. mess up? Yeah, I okay. painted um, on the original one that I did for this cake, I painted the dust on first and then I painted the black and red right over it. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can do it this way that I'm doing it now. So it really doesn't matter. This does kind of go over it a little bit so it will be mm -hmm. um, less crisp. Mute it a little bit, yeah. Um, yeah, it'll mute it just a little bit and add more shimmer, but it still looks really nice. So okay. really good your preference. Perfect. Okay, we did have a, a couple of questions here, um, mostly about the isomalt. Okay. So uh, we had someone ask, um, are isomalt sticks also pre-cooked? Yes, the isomalt sticks are pre-cooked. Um, pretty much any pre-cooked isomalt um, is going to be, it's pretty much the same thing. It's the same um, texture. You just have to keep in mind, depending on if you cook it yourself, if you buy different brands, that they're all going to be different recipes. So they're all going to be a little bit different. Um, so I would just recommend trying a few. Obviously, you know, I use mine because it's my recipe. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> um, but they are, just keep in mind, it is going to be a little bit different. But they should all be pre-cooked unless you get the white powder. Okay, great. And then um, someone asked, uh, what brand of color do you use? Um, I use the Sugar Art is the brand of color that I use, the powdered colors. And I find that they're ground really fine and um, they work best for me. Okay, and that's also the powder that you use inside of your isomalt? Yes, I can mix it into the isomalt or I can paint it on top. All right. So I just covered the whole banner in the gold here. It's just kind of a light gold. And now I'm going to go around the edges with a bronze just to give it more of an aged look. Okay, so I'm going to go around pretty much anywhere I have a line. And just roughly go over just a little bit of color. goes a long way. You don't want it too dark. You want it to kind of fade in like a shadow. And I'm also going to go along the edges where I put those ruffles where the fabric um, kind of would fold upon itself just to give it more shadowing. So I'm just going over it very roughly, making sure it blends into the gold nicely. I don't want too harsh of an edge. Okay, so just go around all of the edges. You can do more or less depending on what you like. Um, you can go around the letters if you want to. You can use different colors. You don't have to do what I'm doing. Um, this is just what I thought looked best, so that's what I did. I really like that. I think it looks really pretty to have that, you know, added, you know. It, it really adds to that, you know, the vintage, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, yeah, really look. Right. yeah, it just adds a little bit more um, character to it and makes it so it's not just plain. All right. Okay, so I have my banner here, if you guys can see that. There's some nice colors to it. So now Lovely. I am going to um, go to the ice malt. Okay. So what, oh yeah, the microwave may go off again, so let me know if um, I cut out. Okay. 
So um, what I did is for because um, obviously I can't just pour ice malt over this. I need something to frame it. I need you know something to go around it uh, and make sure that it's not going to run over the edges of it. So what I did was I actually took um, a piece. We've, of we've lost your picture again, Sydney. Oh, did you? Sorry. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's okay. It'll it'll be back in just a few seconds. But in the okay. meantime, I'm going to show you guys this. Oh, I can't ever get to it. <laughs> you come back too fast. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you're back. But we'll we'll show you guys at the end. This is okay. super cool. Okay. Um. So what I did was I actually took a piece of food grade uh, vinyl, and I actually got this over in Vegas at um, Mildred's Sweet House. And this is actually meant for covering over um, when you cut out like gum paste or petals or things like that. You can cover over it with the vinyl, and it'll keep it fresh. Um. It's called a cell flap. And it's just a piece of food grade vinyl. But what I'm using it for is I'm making a template, um, kind of almost like a cookie cutter, except it won't cut out. It's more of just a border to fit around my um, paper that will trap in the ice melt wherever I want it. So I have um, a piece here. And what I did is I took the uh, banner and I laid it onto the uh, vinyl. And I traced it with um, just a pen. And then I cut it out with scissors. And you should have something like this. You can see that. So you can see it's the shape um, of the outline. And I have another one here just so you can see for all the different pieces. Um, it's kind of in pieces right now, but it has all the roses and um, the anchor and the pinup girl and the bird, everything on it. So I oh, use cool. the same technique for everything. All right. So I have my piece here. And I'll go back down. Somebody's asking if there is vinyl that is not food grade. Yes, uh, you want to make sure that you get the food grade type of vinyl. And also, the thinner the better for this. Um, you don't want it too thin because then it won't hold the ice malt, but if it's really thick, it's going to be harder to cut. Okay, so can you guys see that? So see how I just framed it in the vinyl so that um, it should fit if it goes, uh, if the cut isn't exactly on the edge, it's okay because it is going to be clear. So you won't really see if there's any imperfections um, to the edge of it. Okay, so there we go. Now um, for the other pieces that I did, this one I did use the spell binders. The other um, cutouts like the swallows and the um, pinup girl and the roses, I did a little bit differently. The roses, this is from um, a print from iDesigns. And so you can see it has those roses on it. And I just oh, cut them out with an exacto. And I tried to be as um, do it the same way on each one so that they all were the same shape. And I cut those out and then made a stencil out of that. And then the other ones I just printed. There were pictures that I found. And I printed those out um, on my edible printer. And um, then I recolored them a little bit just to kind of change it up and make it more uh, custom. But I used some of the paints and dust to just make it, you know, a little bit brighter and more custom. Okay, but for this one, I have um, my piece laid out. Make sure you guys can see that. And now what I'm going to do, try and do it off to the side here so it's not right in the way, is I have some ice malt. I just, I'm using clear for this because I want all of the colors to come out. And I'm going to pour it straight over my banner. So I make sure that it's all lined up. And then very carefully pour it in. And I'm going to kind of move it around. If it goes out of the edge a little bit, it's okay, because you can correct that at the end. But I'm just pouring, and hopefully you'll be able to see, but it makes the colors, the ice malt magnifies and makes the colors just really, really pop and look a lot brighter. And this will also give it a more stable backing so mm -hmm. that it won't droop or it won't fall off if you need to be here. This is a really genius way to use some, you know, icing images or, you know, the, you know, the, they're, they're good quality products, but mm -hmm. to have something like the ice malt on top of it to really make it just mm -hmm. flat and glossy and, I mean, it's just really cool. I love exactly. this technique. Yeah, there, you can do things with that um, icing images that you couldn't really hand paint onto the ice mold or you couldn't really, you know, 
um, get otherwise. So it's nice to have that um, just added a little bit to it. And so I'm just going to go over it with the torch because I did have some bubbles the same way as the rose. Okay. And I have some edges that are a little bit rough. I can either use a t you don't use your finger, but use a toothpick and push those in, or you can wait till the end and I'll use the blowtorch to clean it up. All right. So now I will put that aside and try not to bump it while I'm talking. <laughs> and I have one that's already made here so that you guys don't have to sit around and wait for it. Okay. You can see the nice glossy finish on there. And then the paper is on the back. So I just lifted it up. And I do store these. So before I put them on the cake, I put... Oh, did you? I did. I did. Well, I don't know. It. Uh, yeah. It's, you're back. There you yeah, go. Now you now show it again. <laughs> um, so you can see how the nice glossy finishes. And um, before I put these on the cake, uh, since I was doing this over a little period of time, um, to store them, I put uh, some cooking spray on it, and I put them in a Ziploc. So I put it in a sealed plastic container, especially with the humidity here. Uh, I wanted to make sure it stayed nice and glossy, and so that the oil just keeps it nice and pretty looking. Okay. So then from there, I would take um, my swallows and I would attach them onto the side here. Mm -hmm. Oh, so and then cute. I would onto the cake. And on, uh, to put everything onto the cake, I used more ice mold. I just flipped it over so I held, um, had this flat with the back up. And I just poured a little bit of ice mold, just a little line, on the back of it and stuck it to the side of the cake. Um, now, you could use chocolate for this, but it's not going to be as strong, especially since these are fairly heavy. Uh, you want to make sure that it is going to hold on. Um, or if you're delivering it or moving it, uh, you definitely want to make sure that it's going to hold on. The ice melt will actually melt the surface of the fondant and melt it into the ice melt. So it's not going to come off unless the fondant rips off of your cake, um, which is really nice. But again, if you're not as confident with ice melt, you could use chocolate. Um, and it will work. You just may want to, instead of having it suspended on the side of the cake, maybe have it sitting down on the board or on the next tier, uh, just to be safe. Perfect. Somebody asked about the backing, I'm guessing, of the icing images. Would you yeah. remove the backing of the icing images before you pour the ice malt? Um, it doesn't really matter. I was pouring it on a, um, you can do this on a silicone mat or on a Silpat mat. This is a TFX non-stick baking liner. Um, those don't stick to ice mold as well um, either. So uh, it really doesn't matter. You just want to make sure um, that you have something underneath it so that it doesn't stick to the counter. Um, but you can take the plastic off before. You can take it off after it's cooled. It, either way will work. I usually, when I'm, if I was cutting something out like the birds and the anchor, um, I do leave it on the plastic just so that it doesn't slide when I'm trying to cut it out with an exacto. Uh, but other than that, you know, you can do it before or after. It's really up to you. Okay. Um, we had someone ask again, how did you attach the swallows to the banner? Was that just isomalt also? Yes, I poured a little bit onto the back, and then I stick it um, onto the banner. And you can do it before or after. You can put the swallows um, banner onto the cake, or you can do it by versa. So you can put the banner on and then attach the swallows on the cake. Um, it's really up to you. Perfect. Yeah, you know, the one of the great things about um, doing, you know, attaching things with ice malt is that the ice malt cools so quickly that it's just, yeah. it's instant. Yeah, it really does. All right, and then someone asked, uh, where do you get the torches from? Um, the torches are pretty easy to find. Sometimes cake decorating stores or if you have like a baking or cooking store will have them. It's just a little torch. Um, or you can get them at hardware stores, so like Lowe's, Home Depot, um, sometimes Walmart has them. Uh, and they come in different shapes and sizes, but generally they all look something like this. They're usually around thirty dollars, so not too expensive. Very good, very good. Yeah, they. I mean, they have some at Home Depot. But they're just, you know big giant ones. And yeah, you can so use them. You just to be a little bit more careful. They they do work. I have one of those, you know, and and it, it works just fine. But you do have to, you know. I, I use it for bending stuff and you know for my right. structures too. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, one more thing that I'm gonna pour to show you on um, this cake. Yes. Um, on this cake, I don't know if you can see it. You can probably see it better in the picture. 
but um, I used a rope border around each of the tiers. I did those in fondant because I wanted to paint them just a matte gold. I wanted a nice, um, just you know, solid color to match each of the tiers together. But I'm going to show you how to do it out of ice malt because it comes out really, really pretty, especially if you use the icing images with it. So I have the rope mold here, and you could just use this with fondant. Like I said, I used the smaller size, and I'll bring you down again. Okay, can you see that? Yeah. All right. So what I'm going to do is I have a piece of the rose um, icing paper that I use uh, for the roses that I cut out that I showed you earlier. And it has kind of a little bit of a matching design. You could do any design for this. You just want to make sure that it's small and you're going to be able to see the design. If it's a big design, you're not really going to see it. So you want to make sure it's something that's tiny. All right. And then I'll flip this around. So I'm going to use that smaller size. I have my liquid clear ice malt that I'm going to pour first. So just very, very carefully. And again, this is silicone, so I don't have to grease it or anything. So I'm just kind of going back and forth at little intervals, making sure it fills up. OK. Very good. So now I'll take, and again, you can leave the backing on for this, or you can take it off, um, depending on you know, what you want to do. I'm going to take it off now just so that I don't forget, because I tend to do that. And you don't want plastic on your face. <laughs> nope, you don't. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to take it with the pattern side down. And I just used a paper cutter to cut this out so that it was straight. And I'm going to lay it on. And you want to maybe use a toothpick or a spatula just to kind of press it on, unless you're wearing gloves, because you don't want to touch it. And just make sure it's stuck on. It should you know, stick pretty well because the ice mold is liquid. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I'll let that dry, but I don't want to let it dry completely because I want to bend it around the side of the cake, obviously. Um, if you're doing a square cake, you could let this dry and then just cut it to the size you need, but since this is a round cake, I don't want it to um, harden completely. If it does harden, I could use the torch and bend it, but I want it's a lot easier um, yeah, well, so, using the torch to bend it, would, would that make you lose some of the shape of it? It can, yes. If you torch it too much, it could melt it, and you would lose those lines in it. Um, so it is a lot easier just to kind of um, keep an eye on it and keep testing it to see it when it's in that state where it can hold its shape, but it's still soft enough that you can bend it. And I'll bend it um, once that is done um, around the cake so you guys can see. All right. So now I have my rose here that I poured earlier, and usually if you're not sure that it's um, hardened, you can test it with a toothpick, and just in the center of it, just push into it, and if it makes a dent, obviously it's still soft, so you don't want to um, uh, take it out yet, but this one is nice and firm, and so I'm just kind of flexing it, and it just pops right out. So there's the rose. Very pretty. Oh, and that's before I paint it. I'm going to go ahead and paint it now. Um, so I'll go back down here. And use the towel here. So I'm just going to go around. I have a palette here. And I'm going to put a little bit of alcohol, just a couple drops, in my palette. And then sprinkle some of the Turkish black. And let's use a paintbrush for this. I'm going to use a really fine paintbrush. That one should work. And I don't want this too thin down, so I don't want to add too much alcohol because the thicker it is, the easier it will be to paint um, for this. Because the ice is transparent, so if it's too light, you're not going to see the color. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to mix that. Okay? So I just kind of blot it. And then on each of the little lines that are sticking up, I'm going to go around and just highlight them. Would you recommend, uh, would a gel color work with this? You could use a gel color if you wanted to for this. Um, it is, would it beat up? Um, sometimes if you add too much, it can. Mm -hmm. But you could use it if you didn't have the right color on hand of this. And now, obviously, I'm not being you know perfect because I'm not paying attention and I'm talking, but I would just go around 
each of the little edges, and I did this. Um, I also, since I did pulled roses, I pulled some leaves and vines for um, the topper and for around the roses. So you could do the same thing. You can pour them in like a deep green. And then I painted the edges of those as well, uh, just so that they all match. Because I thought this matched the, um, the printed out roses that I did in the stencil really well. Kind of give it a 2D and 3D effect. Right, someone's asking about the, the border. Uh, they mm -hmm. said, if you use the border with ice melt, can you still use it for fondant? I'm guessing yeah. they're asking about the actual mold. That's my Yes, guess. definitely. I use mine for all different things, and you can use it with gum paste, with chocolate, uh, modeling chocolate, gelatin. You can use it as many different times as you want with different mediums. And um, Sometimes with chocolate, I'll find that I may have to wash it out, but generally, I mean, I don't even have to do that. Very cool. Yeah, these molds are, are really wonderful. In fact, um, a, a little bit ago, we actually did a. Um, I wrote a post about um, a thing that uh, one of my friends, Paula Ames, was doing. I'm sure that some of you know who she is. Uh, she gathered up a, a bunch of cake decorators that uh, donated things and and signatures to a little girl that uh, made their Christmas. And yeah. Sydney actually donated some molds. And when when Paula got those, when Paula got Sydney's molds, she looked at them and she called me. She actually called me and said, "Wow, Sydney's molds are amazing!" <laughs> so she was really impressed. <laughs> oh, awesome! Yeah, I was definitely happy to do that. That was an awesome thing. It was a really cool thing. If you guys didn't get to see, uh, you know, what that was all about, uh, there's actually a blog post about it with a, a video that that I put together. So it was yeah. really fun. Very nice. Okay, so the rope now um, has had enough time to dry, so you can see I'm bending it and it's just coming out. It is still a little bit soft, so I may use the torch just a little bit um, because I was doing something else and not paying as much attention as I needed to. Uh, so I'll just lay it down here. You can see it. Use my torch. And the torch will actually, sometimes silicone can collect bubbles, so the torch will actually clear it up too. So sometimes I'll even just do this. Um, if it's hard. Okay, you want to be careful now because it will be very hot. And now I'm going to take a dummy cake, and usually I'll do this so that the dummy is um, sitting up like this. And I'm going to take just that a little bit so you can see. I'm going to take the rope and just bend it over the side. So you want it um, to be the same size dummy, obviously, as the cake that you have. Uh, maybe bend it out just a little bit because you have to account for the fondant. If you're doing this on a real cake, or if you are uh, planning on just putting this on and having it to stay, um, and not making it in advance, I guess, you can do this straight onto the cake. You don't have to let it cool first. You can just push it onto your cake. Um, but if you're planning on making these in advance and then putting them on all at once, you want to do it around the dummy cake like this just to make sure that they're all um, uniform. Okay, so I just kind of let it dry on there for maybe a minute, and I'll just kind of set that aside so that it rests on the bottom, and then that will be dried, but you can see the nice design it has in there. So it matches the cake. I like that. I like that a lot. Did you use something as backing for the original one, the right here, um, the, the gold? That one I did do in fondant, um, and I just painted it with the wedding gold that I used to dust the banner. Um, because I just wanted kind of something that would make all of the tiers match together. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't yeah. want something too busy because I wanted the focal points to be on the cake itself. But I figured since this is really pretty, and if you didn't want to do something as elaborate as this, um, you know, this is a nice way to get the colors into it and um, just make it really pretty. I like these. I do like that. I like that a lot. Okay. And then I have some other um, examples of just painting on ice malt. Um, you can see here. Yeah, I'll take them out. I think it would be easier. But um, this was just painted. I believe the gems are poured and then painted on with um, different colors. So you can see the little gems. This is from one of our new molds. Very cute. I'll have to throw that up color. on the website, too. <laughs> yeah. So just some examples. It is really fun. Um, that's one of my favorite steps is painting the pieces. Um, after they're finished because it just brings them to life. 
And then I have some of the roses, just so you can see, uh, next to the 3D roses, how similar they are. See those kind of more up close. Mm. Oh, I love the I I love those. I like trying to bring in 2D and 3D together, so it's fun when mm -hmm. they can match up. Okay. And now the topper um, I did in blown and pulled sugar, so I blew the heart and then I pulled the wings and attached that all together. I used a six-inch um, cake metal cake pan that was greased, and I poured some navy blue ice salt into it for the base, uh, and just pulled some green. Uh, like thorny vines to go around the bottom. Uh, that obviously you didn't want to do like a more you know something that elaborate. You can do a variation of that, but um, I figured since that kind of matched the theme of it, so um, that's what I did for the topper, and I think it turned out pretty well. I think it turned out amazing. <laughs> I absolutely love this, and I, I mean, who wouldn't love this? This is so gorgeous. Thanks. It is so so cool. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, um, since we uh, didn't get to the pictures ahead of time, I want to show you guys. You guys have to see this. You just have to see this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this right here, it doesn't. I, you can't really see what it is at this point, but mm -hmm. this is the this is the you know starts of a pirate. Yeah. I just and it. All, um, of this, mm -hmm. all of this is pulled sugar. Is that? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's all pulled isomal, and I sculpted him. He's um, he's solid, and I sculpted kind of like a bust because I wanted to do I wanted to try doing some faces, and um, I thought a pirate was funny because I've always liked pirates. So um, I did his bust. That picture is of his bottom, you know, his neck down. I did kind yeah, of like a shoulders and neck. Yeah, yeah, shoulders, his jacket. Um, I kind of cut off the arms because I was looking at some busts and things, and um, so it had that nice cut down. It's kind of hard to see. And then that's mm -hmm. um, his head once I put that on. I did the whole thing in clear so that I could mismatch pieces onto it. And then I painted it afterwards the same way I painted the rose by just mixing some colors together. Um, and so it was, sorry, was the head made out of, did you blow the head or did you it's solid. cast that? It's solid. You cast that? Solid. or? Um, no, I pulled it. I shaped oh, okay. it first and then I attached. I kind of did indents for his eyes. One eye has the eye patch, so I did that on top. And then I did the one eye, I added his beard, I added his nose, and I worked that in there, and some um, forehead wrinkles and a bandana, and then I did his hat. That's so cool. And then once it's all painted, oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> that is incredible. That is so awesome. Could you blow a head like that size? Could you do something um, that big? You could. Yeah, you, I mean, it's definitely possible. Um, I wanted to do something solid just so that I had... A little bit more stability to it because um, I travel, so I, you know, want things to be a little bit more um, strong so that they don't break. But um, you could, I mean, you could do it blown. It would just be you'd have to do it a lot quicker, and it would have to, it would be more difficult. Um, but I just did it in cold because I wanted him to have that strength. So. Yeah, well, and and if you want it to be a display piece, you definitely want it to have that mm -hmm. structure. Yeah, not so fragile. <laughs> yeah, Although because, I'm sure yeah. that that's got some fragile parts on it. Yes, yeah, the hair and the beard and um, the ruffles are all kind of thin. So <laughs> That's so, so cool. That is just amazing to me. I love it. <laughs> I love it. All right. Um, we do have a few questions. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, Someone says, I am considering buying a, an edible ink printer. Are they as easy to use as a color laser printer? Yes. I mean, it's pretty much the exact same thing. Um, you can print out anything that you want. I do use icing images, and um, I use their iDesigns program. And it has just so many different designs, um, hundreds upon hundreds of different designs, and of variations of colors and everything. So I mean, all you have to do is pick the design pick the size and hit print. But you can print out anything that you would like as well. You can upload your own pictures. You can copy things, you know, um, if you have one that has the scanner. So it really is as easy. It's basically the same thing. It just has edible inks and you use edible paper. OK, great. Um, then we have, if you used the border, oh, we already asked that question. Will ice malt release from a metal cake pan if you use it as a mold? Yes, but you have to put cooking spray in it. Just spray oh. some in and then wipe it out. 
and that will make it release. Sometimes if it's sticking a little bit too much, you can take the blowtorch to the, um, kind of flip it upside down on the metal. You can use the blowtorch and then with a, like, a towel or something, not your bare hand, push it, and that will release it a little bit easier, or maybe twist it inside of the cake pan. Um, okay. That will, you know, let it release easier, but it definitely, it works really nice, and it gives you a perfect head, which is really nice. Perfect. All right, and then also, um, Debbie Icing Images, she's on the chat right now, <laughs> and she said something that I, I, I wanted to make sure everybody had a chance to hear, so um, the beginner sweet accent dyes, the, the dyes that actually come with the sweet accent, uh, they can actually be used as um, molds for isomol also. So mm -hmm. you can actually use, um, put a little bit of shortening on or spray yep. them, I guess you could. Yeah, and exactly. then plant them place them flat on a, a silicone mat and then mm -hmm. pour it in, um, pour in some isomalt. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and that's actually something, I, I believe that Peggy Tucker, when she did her training mm -hmm. on the, the Sweet Accent, uh, I believe that she, she showed and demonstrated that also. Um, yeah. So yeah, you can go check that out if you want to see more about that. Yeah. But, yeah. Very cool. So cool. Yeah. Oh. I love I love all these ideas that, that you've shown us and I, I, I just the isomalt has become my uh, my New Year's resolution. <laughs> so I'm gonna be working more with isomalt this year. So I'm really glad that you shared some of this stuff and, and some really fun ways to use. I mean I have a sweet accent machine and uh, I haven't used it all that much yet because I d I'm not doing as many cakes. Yes. And so I'm thinking, okay, I'm pulling this out. I'm doing some fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice because so. there's so many things you can do with ice malt, and there's so many things you can do with the sweet accents, and then there's so many things you can do with the paper. So combining them all, there's so many different combinations of different techniques that you can do with it. So it's really, really fun. <laughs> that is so cool. And there's all right. more examples on uh, my website and on icingimages.com, too, of different things that you can do with it. Okay. Um, and then... Someone asked, what what ed edible printer do you recommend? Um, the one I have is from Icing Images. I believe it's the 5220 is the number um, that I have of the uh, Canon printer. So that's the one that I use. But, I mean, it depends, I guess, on you know, how much you're going to be doing and different types. So. Very cool. And you can also... Um, um, want to do the printer, you can get the eye designs for my images just in a sheet. So you don't have to, you know, invest um, if you're just doing like one or two things. You can get them from icingimages.com in the already printed out eye designs. So cool. Okay. Well, all right. We are going to have to cut this short. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I, hate, I hate to stop when, when there's always so much information coming in and so much to talk about. It's so fun. Um, but we do need to cut it short. Well, not cut it short, but, you know, yeah, and yeah. if anyone has any more questions, though, they can um, Facebook message me or post on my wall or email on my website. Um, I'm always on there, so you can definitely ask me, and I'll do my best to reply. Perfect. And Sydney is really good at that. I've I've never um, sent her something without a re response within hours. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, um, we are going to do the giveaway now. Uh, all of you guys, I want you to. Um, Send me an email. I want you to, in that email, type type out uh, your favorite part about this training that, that Sydney shared with you. And uh, email it to, let's see, right here, cakefood.com at gmail.com. And that's how we will pick our winners. So go ahead, make sure you go and do that so that you guys have a chance at the giveaways. We're giving away four things. Again, we're going to be giving away... Um, first, Sydney's uh, kit here. That oh, here we go. Show you that kit again. This is her kit right here. Everything that she showed you on the training. Uh, the the rose, it's hooked with a carnation, so that's bonus, yay. And then the rope mold, which gives you two sizes of ropes, and then also the isomalt. And so uh, these will actually be available on our website. Uh, they are um, they are really high quality, really good product. And so it's a 25% off discount. 
I believe that there's a link down below this that you can actually go to for that. Um, and you can take advantage of that discount if by chance you don't win. <laughs> so, and then the, and the other things that we will be giving away, there's a $50 gift certificate from Icing Images, which is, I mean, that's cool. Uh, you can get a lot of the icing sheets or whatever for $50. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So um, icingimages.com. You can actually, um, if you're going to be uh, looking for some things on there, make sure you take advantage of the discount that Icing Images has offered today. Sydney is the keyword um, at, at checkout. You will get 10% off a minimum order of $120. And yeah. that's icingimages.com. Also, there is uh, the iDesign that they're offering $100 off of a lifetime subscription, which, I mean, that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> so the, the code for that is Sid Cake Foo. So right there is your, your code for that. Um, again, icingimages.com. You can go on there and check out everything that they have over there. So it's really cool. And thank you, thank you, Debbie Icing Images, for, for the the giveaway. Um, yeah, so that's really you. cool. And then also Edible Artist Network is giving away um, a, a one-year subscription to their digital magazine. And you guys can go over there and check out the magazine subscriptions over there. And they're also giving away one re, uh, physical magazine to a winner. Yeah, so. and in the um, physical magazine also we will have the um, Ask the Experts uh, category, which it has um, Peg Tucker, Kathleen Lang, Mike Terry, and Joanne um, from uh, Edible Artists Network and myself. So you can submit questions actually and it will have um, our different answers and you know, varying um, answers to the questions too, which is really cool. Perfect. All right, so Sydney, um, I'm going to have you pick four numbers for me. It okay. looks like we have quite a few, so how about you pick four numbers? Um, let's go one through 20. Okay. So one um, number at a time. Okay. Uh, how about the first one, four? Okay, first winner is Christina Dodd. So Ooh. yay, Christina. So Christina will win the, the kit. Uh, the uh, yeah. Let me make record of that. Okay, and then let's see. We have pick another number for me. Uh, let's do seven. Seven. Okay. That would be Cakes by K. I'm guessing Cakes by Karen, I'm not sure. But Cakes by K. So congratulations to you. Uh, you're going to win our $50 gift certificate from Icing Images. So congratulations to you. That's so cool. All right, what, another number? Uh, about 12. 12, OK. Let's see. All right, Kathy Lambert is our winner, and Kathy will be getting the one-year subscription. So oh. that's really cool to um, Edible Artists Network. And let's see, one more. Okay, let's go 16. 16, okay. That would be Shirley Scarborough. Yay! <laughs> so yay! <laughs> and uh, Shirley, you um, you won the um, the magazine, the physical magazine. Yes. So awesome! Yay! All right, I will get all of that taken care of for you guys. Congratulations to our winners. Again, yes. make sure that you guys take advantage. Follow these links. Check out all the stuff that they have. Um, these guys are so amazing and kind to be giving away all these things. So yeah. make sure you guys give back. <laughs> this is really yeah. this is really cool. So thank you so much, everybody, for coming. Thank you so much, Sydney, for, for coming and joining us. Yeah, it was so fun, and you taught so much, and, and we really appreciate everything that you had to teach us. So. Oh, thank you. Thanks, everyone, for watching.
All right, we will see you all guys or see all of you guys next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.